Hey, what's up everyone? Shane here with ROA Off-Road. Today, I'm gonna be uh, doing a fun video. I'm, we did one of these a little while ago on some teardrops. We did an OGT teardrop versus the Fort 9. We just got a trade in recently, and this is of a Mission Overland, and this is the Summit model. This is a 2021, so it's not a brand new model, but I've actually never seen one of these, so I was kind of excited to see one. I mean, I've seen them at the shows, but I've actually never really walked into them a bunch and put my hands on them. So I'm actually gonna walk through this one, and then I actually wanna do a comparison side by side with the Fort 9 and kind of see what we got. So I think I've ran into maybe the owner or founder of this company at some of the Overland shows. Seems like a really cool guy. Like I said, I don't know a lot about these trailers. I haven't seen these trailers before seen them from a distance and they look pretty cool. You're gonna wanna definitely go fact check me on some of the stuff on this. Go to their website, check out their videos. Obviously the Fort 9 is a product that we sell and I know a lot about this and we are one of the main dealers for this. And so I'm gonna give you a little bit of background that I know it, it looks like on their website, it says it was founded by two guys out of a garage. I don't think they've been in business more than 10 years because we've been in this business longer than almost anybody. And the first time I saw them was a few years ago. They may have been in business a lot longer, but I just never knew about them. And that's about most most of what I know. They do say that, you know, they're a small company and they're not about big trailers. They're about small, unique designs. And they are really cool. They're very cool trailers. I've seen the composite panels at the show that they show off. It's a uh, one piece composite, which is pretty cool. That's a cool design. Um, but yeah, so there you have it. That's kind of the history on this. Now, MDC, a little bit more about MDC. They've been in business, I think next year will be 20 years officially in business. And they are actually the largest manufacturer in Australia for off-road trailers. Like they, they have put over 40,000 trailers into the outback, which is crazy. So I think that makes them the world's largest off-road trailer manufacturer. Lots of experience. The founder is from Australia, born and raised Australian, and he started working with a company in China about 17 to 20 years ago, and slowly worked with the guy to build a factory. And now they are building what is some of the best off-road trailers in the world. Definitely in Australia, they have the reputation as the value, the cost of their trailers, and the quality and the componentry that you get in these things are some of the best in the world. And that is their history. They are relatively new in the US, but an iconic brand now in Australia. If you go and do research on them, you'll see that the owners love love their product and they do have a very good reputation. I can talk more about this company because I know more about this company. Sorry if I'm vague about that one. I'm not trying to be unfair or anything. I just don't know as much. But today I wanna kinda do a first impressions slash walk around comparison between the two trailers. I thought this would be pretty fun. Both of these trailers technically are like teardrop trailers, but they're actually hybrid, so they have pop tops. And the nice thing about these trailers is that makes them garageable. So you can fit them both in your garage. This one, if you measure from here all the way down, you're about six foot seven inches, just a little over six foot seven. And this one, if you measure from the solar panels all the way down, you're coming in about seven foot nine inches. So they are both under eight feet. And generally that's what you need to be able to fit in most standard garages in the US. So they will both fit in a garage. Now, as far as tip to tip, we're talking from the very tip of the hitch all the way back to the tire. This one is 15 foot three inches. And the Mission Overland, we just measured and we measured from the very tip of the hitch. So if there's different types of couplers, I suppose you could have a different size tongue, but it measured 16 foot seven inches. The only reason why I'm mentioning how we measured it because these are actual measurements in our front lot that we got from a tape measure. The website gives different measurements. So I don't know why it says it's shorter. It says it's 15 foot. And so we thought this one was actually shorter than this one, but with a tape measure, it's actually longer. So just giving you the measurements that we have right here. I did go on the website and I did do a little research because I wanted to kind of understand both of the units a little bit better. Another thing about a teardrop or a hybrid trailer and the benefit of these types of trailers is the towability. One of the most important things is mid-sized trucks. 
or Jeeps, right? People want to be able to tow with a smaller SUV like a Ford Bronco or a Jeep Wrangler. The new Jeep Wranglers now tow 5,000 pounds. Gladiator, midsize truck, whatever it is. So this one, the website on it, this says that it weighs 2,250 pounds dry weight. That's on the Mission Overland website. We actually took this unit yesterday down to the Catscale empty and it actually weighed 2,450 pounds. So a couple hundred pounds heavier, dry. Now, I don't know every manufacturer is different and I'm assuming that when they give you the dry weight, it means there's no propane, no tire. A lot of times dry means it's totally base. There's no options on it. So once you start throwing tires and propane tanks, obviously the weight's gonna go up. So this unit, this model that we have right here that you're looking at, it weighs over 2,400 pounds the way it is loaded. Now this unit over here, MDC doesn't really option out their units. It's fully loaded. So you have a total of 525 watts on the roof. You have all your, your lithium battery bank, your propane bottles, your spare tires. All of those things are included with the trailer. You even have an annex and awnings. All of those things are gonna be included right out of the gate. And this unit dry weight is just over 3,000 pounds, 3,090 pounds. Um, so like that's the difference is this might not be included in the base model or the weight. So your weight on this one, fully loaded with all the options, is just over 3,000 pounds. Now your GVWR, and what that is, it's your gross vehicle weight rating. And generally, the way they come up with that is your tires, your rims, and your suspension. This one is rated for a fully loaded up to 3,500 pounds. So just keep in mind, you have, you know, as a fully based at 22 to 3,500, you have about 1,200 pounds worth of cargo, but that's assuming you're totally base. This unit, you would only have about 1,100, less than 1,100, about 1,000 pounds of cargo. Now, if you start putting more stuff on this unit, then it's gonna reduce your overall uh, weight capacity. You might be less than 1,000 pounds. This unit right here, the GVWR, which is what the axles and everything are rated for, is actually 4,000, 409 pounds so from the dry weight you have about a thousand four hundred pounds worth of cargo the nice thing is it's already fully optioned so that's actual true weight you a thousand four hundred pounds is what you can put in this for sure not that that's what you're going to put in it that's a lot of weight and you might only need to put 500 pounds you know but you got water and food and gear and that's what you're gonna do. So keep that in mind. Now, speaking of suspensions, this, like I said, I don't know a lot about these things. I believe this is a Timberin from what I know, um, and it does look like it is a Timberin. So this is a axle-less Timberin suspension. So right here, this rubber is gonna kind of move and pivot up and down. They're good for small light trailers, but you can see it's really just a rubber on rubber suspension, and that just kind of, uh, there's not a lot of articulation or travel. They just kind of bounce down the road. For such a small trailer, it's not a big deal. Uh, when you get into bigger trailers, those timber and suspensions are not really robust. I mean, it's only rated for 3,500 pounds, right? So the suspension on this, this is a proprietary suspension that's made by MDC. And keep in mind, we're talking 40,000 trailers in the Outback, and they have been now running the suspension for years, doing a lot of different updates and improvements on it. And you can see it's an independent A-arm with gas shocks, coils. There's actually four gas shocks on this and the shop that they actually get their shocks from is from the same place that builds ARB and other reputable shocks. So it's not just a off-brand shock company that they're putting on these trailers. This is very heavy duty, very robust. Now it looks like we do have electric brakes on each side. Uh, these one looks quite a bit smaller. I don't know if you can tell. It is a smaller, lighter trailer, so it would make sense. You come over to here, you do have a 12 inch electric drum, and this does have the mega hub. I'm not gonna talk about that hub because I don't know as much about it. So let's keep on walking through this. So I'm curious about outside kitchens on these because I've never really seen this system. So this looks like, uh, this looks like it's gonna be the opposite side of the outside kitchen. Um, and it looks like we have a Truma, which is pretty nice. We got a Truma furnace in here. Um, so let's go to the other side and check, take a look at this outside kitchen. Coming up here, 
it looks like they're gonna have some sort of there we go so we have a water pump right here um you can look into here you have and they've done a pretty good job at you know they're zip tying everything all the way back but so this lever is going to come down and you're going to pull out and this is nice you have a large storage area it's just all open down here which is pretty cool idea and then that's your your drain you're going to just drop that down somewhere and then it looks like they're using a dometic sink and it does look like it's actually plumbed in yeah, there's two water lines. So this is probably plumbed hot and cold, which is very nice. And then this comes up and this is gonna be a little windshield. And this is a Dometic stove. And I am in no way, shape or form a fan of these Dometic stoves. I think they're rubbish. Um, this, these things put out like, I think like not over five, barely over 5,000 BTUs on one of them. Well, I think one is larger and one is smaller. I'm not as familiar with this one. I'm familiar with that, the three burner one but not a fan of these Dometic stove tops, but they work, whatever. And it's nice that you put a windshield because you actually need a windshield because the BTU is so so weak that you actually need it. Now, um, let's walk over here. I want to check out to see, maybe this is our fridge compartment. That, oh yeah, there you go. N nice, nice, big Truma fridge. These tracks are, these are, this is kind of sticky. This is a used trailer, so keep that in mind but these tracks are very common. I think you just order these tracks from China <laughs> somewhere, but it does look like they have some pretty good support that's holding these tracks. Come all the way out and we have a refrigerator. Okay, it's on this side. Oh, that makes sense. You want it on this side. And this is filling up this track in its entirety. And this is a, where is it? This is a 69 liter. So this is a freezer and a fridge, 69 liter. That's, that's, a, that's a decent size. And looking in here, this is, this is nicely done though. See these giant L brackets that they have that they've built down into here and they actually mount it to the, the floor, the frame. Um, and that's like quarter inch brackets and there's two of them. That's nice. Uh, a lot of these tracks over the years with all the weight of, I mean, when you load this up with food, this, these tracks right here are okay. These are the, the, the weight is on these are gonna fail over time, but those brackets that are holding it all together, that's gonna be really good and robust. So I'm gonna leave that open for a second and let it air out. It's not been open for a while, so it's smelly. And coming over here, this is the other side of the refrigerator compartment. And you can see this is a, oh, come on. <laughs> we got a, we look, look at this. This is a lead acid battery. Might be an AGM or gel. Probably an AGM. At least you don't have to put the, or no, maybe it is a lead acid. Maybe you have to pop this up and put water in this thing to fill it up and for gassing and stuff. Anyways, whatever. That's, it is what it is. Now it does look like right here we have a solar charge controller. This is a Renogy. Um, and then it looks like the wiring comes right here. And I'm guessing this, goes you can see okay it's zip tied right there and it looks like we got some solar panels up here i'm gonna go and check it out so it looks like we have two flat panel solar panels these are okay these are not ideal um these are this is the most inefficient way to do solar to do a flat panel um i don't know what the brand of these are uh but it looks like these look like maybe 125 150 so i don't know what the specs are on the website but I would guess this is a 300 watt solar panel system. I would, I, I would say that's generous. It might only be 250, but, it, but I would say 300. And you could also add some more here, it looks like. And then of course we have a nice vent right here and that's gonna be just for your inside vent. And looks like still there. So that's very good. Um, and then let's look at this, see what's this. What's, oh, this is the backside of the kitchen. I already opened this and it does look like you have a little oh this is a little outside shower this is a cool little system actually you just plug this into it and you have hot and cold water right here um and then you have just the back side of this area truma um and that's going to be your water heater and your furnace right there and where is it getting ducted i don't even see where the duct is oh okay okay so it looks like it's getting ducted to right here so that's a combi those are there are those are awesome units those have about two i think it's 2.6 gallons of hot water 
and then the furnace depends on the size of it the furnaces work really good and this trailer this small that shroom combi is going to be amazing the water heaters are going to be yeah whatever i'm going to talk about these compartment doors in a bit but i want to since we just did kitchen backside of kitchen i want to now hit kitchen on the fort nine um also because this is relevant to your kitchen and your truma and water heater. It looks like you have 14.2 pounds of propane that will be your cooktop, your water heater, and your furnace. And you just have a little strap mechanism here. Definitely wanna put a padlock on that because this could bounce off and fall off as you're driving. Keep that in mind. Since we're talking propane, let's go straight to the MDC propane. Um, this is all mounted into a storage area. You can see this is actually a massive compartment for propane. So here you have, this is a 20 pounder, just so you can get a good idea. So the other one has a 14 pounder. This is 20 pounds. You can put two in here, have a total of 40 pounds of propane. If you wanted to, we have fit 30 pounders in here, so you could have 60 pounds. That's a ton amount of propane. Another thing that I wanna point out, just as a little worst case scenario, hopefully this would never happen, but see all of these propane lines and see this connection? This is a piece of plastic, right? This, this is how all propane works. They have these plastic handles. You have these regulators right here. When you close this up, your propane is completely protected in here and it drains all out on the bottom if there was ever a leak. But this is, look at this. You're, you're in an off-road trailer. And if you have rocks shooting at your propane tank and you hit one of these, also down here, like, I know this is metal, but like, this is a rubber line right here. This is a rubber line. This is just sitting out in the sun, getting sun rot. Um, and I mean, worst case scenario, a rock hoot shoots into this and you're oozing out gas everywhere. And that's dangerous, right? I personally would put this on the backside or, you know, at least have some sort of protect protective box here. Um, I don't know if that's something new in the newer models. This is a 2021, but that's just something that I wanted to point out. Um, now let's come in here. We do have, this is our refrigerator drawer. Uh, and this tracking system is also very robust. You have an L bracket system here. Uh, and then this is, this has a double locking mechanism. So it locks like that. That other one had that just, it had just two of these with that knob down here. This right here is a lock so this is going to pull out and go out of the way very strong and then you're going to lever that down um this does have the anderson and the 12 volt plug i don't know what that had I should probably don't go double check but this is just some of the goodies that you get with the trailer when you first buy it whoops stuff are falling out this is open because this is actually designed for a 90 liter refrigerator i think the other one was a 69 so you could definitely put a much larger fridge and freezer combo into this trailer so that is your refrigerator of course i don't know if that refrigerator is included i'm guessing it's not because of the weights that they gave you on the website being 2200 pounds we weighed it with the fridge on there right so that's probably the weight difference once again you have this locking mechanism and that goes up and out of the way and then you have a lever right there so right there um okay so we got some ties that hold this down this is gonna go up you also have a windshield uh, and then that slides down this entire kitchen is all aluminum i think that other one was aluminum as well but it was just that open that big open area um, this has a cutlery drawer I guess the benefit of that other one, that open one, is definitely had more storage under there. Um, this is kind of refined. Um, you have a little lever right here that moves out of the way to open this. And this is just access to get your drain and some of your stuff out of there, your propane. Now this little lever, I really like this thing. Check this out. So you got a little lever right there. You got to pull and twist. And then this drops down and you go out. Similar sink. Um, hot and cold and this is plumbed into it you also do have a cool little storage compartment right there that you can put maybe long poles or you could have the post because this has a post where you can mount it to hold up the the kitchen more and i think that's important i didn't even notice if that one has a post but over time the weight you know it's good to have some support now look at this too just little cool little design features mdc 
right here, we have a three burner Thef Thefford. MDC actually has the exclusive rights to this product in North America, which is pretty cool. And I was talking with them and the reason why he got that is because we were raving about this. He says in Australia, you know, they like to make big steaks, so they want a really good stove top. This thing puts out 9,800 BTUs. Those Dometics, I've never seen them put out over 6,000 on any of them. Usually they're less. One of them's like 58 and the other one's like 37. It's like super low. These two little ones are 6,300 BTUs and this one's 9,800 BTUs. So your smaller burners right here are more output than your larger burners on the Dometic stoves. And this one is almost twice the out output of any of those. So you can actually cook a good amount of food on these things and that you don't spend an hour waiting for it to heat up. So this kitchen, well, I don't know, you be the judge. You saw that one in this one. Uh, this one definitely just feels more refined overall. So now in order to put this back, you do have to unlock it and then it will slide right back. Uh, another thing, I got a little nice bottle opener right there. And you're gonna have to hold that in when it locks in and then that lever goes down and holds it in place. Also, I think this is part of the kitchen, so might as well point it out. Uh, we do have a little drop down tray and this is just gonna make it nice to be able to have some prep area. You do have some 12 volt plugs right there to plug things in and you also have a 120 volt outlet. That will work off grid. So I think at this point, we walked around to the other side on the mission to look at the storage on the other side, opposing side of the kitchen. So I think we should do that. Now I do want to point out, um, we pretty much went through all the front storage on the mission overland. Uh, the fridge was up front. This is the fridge on the MDC, but you do have an extra cargo box on this one. On the mission, you don't have the cargo box. You just have the spare tire up here with your propane. Of course, this area is really big and these are pretty, I think this is all aluminum. This feels like aluminum and you could strap stuff to these. You have a lot of space right there. These ones up here, you have actual storage into here. And this is a pretty deep storage. Like if I reach down, that's like my entire arm length. Uh, you do have jerry cans in here, but you could easily remove those and just utilize this as storage. And then I already showed you the propane. Um, you have another storage compartment right here. One nice thing too is these are lockable. You can put padlocks on these. And then you have your storage compartment right here. I just noticed this one is not lockable. Is that interesting? Look at this. This must be an old feature, but look, oh, never mind. Sorry, it's lockable right there. So that's good. And these are actually pretty good handles. Um, but if you open this up, this is looks like an aluminum door, but it's very, it's very thin. It's just metal on metal. And you do have a, a seal right here. So you have a rubber gasket here, but it's just a single seal. So I'm gonna walk around to the other storage and point out some stuff. But these are good latches and they do kind of tighten it a little bit. Um, these front storage compartments, obviously you have a seal right here, but these are not designed to be airtight. So on the other side of the MDC, we have another latch, uh, another storage compartment, and it's pretty good size. It's carpeted, which is really nice. The finishing touches feel nice. This is your annex. So the entire trailer, when you open, it's got a 270 awning that loops all the way around the back and over the kitchen area. And you can actually cover and enclose the entire awning area. And it comes included with the trailer. But if you're out camping and you don't wanna use that, you can leave that at home. Another thing I wanna point out is there is a light right here. So you do have light in this storage compartment. I didn't notice if there was a light in the other storage compartment. I'm gonna go look really quick. Nope, no light. Really? Not even a light over there on the fridge side. Interesting. The fridge might have a light. This one right here, we actually have a light right there. And we also have lights right here and right here. They're also yellow lights too. So you have amber lights. So if the bugs are out, you can also do that. It does look like we have a yellow a light right here. I don't know if this is yellow. It looks like it's just an LED light. So I'm going back and forth, but I'm just trying to do a comparison. This is my very first time seeing this trailer. So it looks like we have one single light right here and there's 
there's no lighting in there. So you have one light and it's just, it's just an LED light. It's not gonna give you, that's not gonna be a bug light. Uh, and then there's no light in there and the fridge does not have a light. Yes, oh, actually it does, sorry. There's a little light right here. So you do have a little LED light right there. So that's nice. Um, so coming over back here, you can see there's two lights. Those LED lights are really bright and the bug lights, the amber light, amber lights are also, they're not as bright, but they're good to deter the bugs. Um, coming over to this side, you do have another light. You can see this one I just turned on, it's an ember light. It is also a white light too, so it's super bright. This track right here, it comes with this. It's in that storage compartment that I just opened. You have a shower enclosure that you can open up and you can have a full shower enclosure and you have your hot and cold water right here. You also have a fill. This is your fill station. It says fresh water right there and aluminum engraved right there. And then over here you have your hookups. This is your 30 amp shore power. Um, and then you have a TV inlet <laughs> if you needed that. And it's all engraved in this little aluminum back plating. It's a little dirty, it, got, it was windy the other day. Um, and then we do have our furnace, which I mentioned in that one is a Truma. This one has a Dometic furnace. For such a small unit, this is gonna be more than enough. The other one is also gonna be more than enough. Your water on this one though is an on-demand Aquago and it's built by Truma. The nice thing about that, it's right next to the shower. This is plumbed into the sink, kitchen, and your outside shower. I think that room is also plumbed because it showed uh, there was hot and cold water to that sink, so I'm sure it's plumbed as well. The nice thing about this is this is on demand, so you can take as long as you want and never run out of water. That has about a 2.6 gallon tank in the Truma Combi. So you're gonna definitely be able to take a longer shower, not that you want to, because you're off grid and you're trying to conserve your water. Now, the other thing that I wanna talk about is these doors, I pointed out just a little bit ago how the other one had a gasket that kind of slid along here. And that is good, it had a single gasket. The MDC, one of the things that's unique about them is they actually have a triple gasket system. So you have this one right here, and then this is actually a rubber gasket as well. And it actually seals against the rubber on rubber. And then you also have another seal right here on the edge. Um, and then these handles, these doors are a little bit different. It's, it's a cam lock, so when you actually pull it, it actually sucks in. And that kind of compresses this compartment to keep the dust out of it. Um, so you go like that, and it compresses in like that. And you can see now, you have a pretty good seal on these gaskets. And you also have the in, inner gaskets. And these are lockable as well. So um, they both are lockable. Uh, that one had one gasket, this one has a triple gasket. Now, I will point out on this one, it does have a similar door. Uh, it's not the exact same. This one has, this, this one right here into the kitchen area actually is a triple gasket sill. So that one's not into that storage area, but this one is, which is important because this is the one into the kitchen and the furnace and the Truma. Um, so there you have it. Okay. Uh, it does look like we have a water port fill here. In this one, the water capacity is 37 gallons. In the Fort 9, it's 31 gallons. So not quite as much water. And then this one does have an outside shower right here. So this is gonna open. This is an overland vehicle system and then that's gonna give you a shower. So I don't know if this is included or not on the MDC, on the Fort 9, it is included. Not sure on this one. Um, and then your, 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 I'm guessing this is for your shower. And I guess, I guess you just have to hang it over here and set it down. That one is actually integrated right in front of it, which is kind of strange. And then coming over here, we have your 30 amp plug and they both have a 30 amp plug. Okay, I wanna walk back around and see if there's anything I missed over here. Yeah, so you do have an awning on this one as well. And that's an overland vehicle system. I'm assuming this is a 270. I'm not gonna pull it out right now. It's like 100 degrees outside. It's really hot. <laughs> all in all, it's, it's a pretty cool trailer. I do actually like this. This is just a wrap, it looks like. It's a cool wrap. You could do a wrap on that, but this is what it looks like it comes with. I don't know if you can actually option this stuff in or not. Looking over, looking on the back side of this, you have your tail lights, you have your brake lights here. Over here you have your tail lights, you have running lights, 
You also have an entry light because this is a rear entry. And so you do have a light right here and this is gonna have your amber and your white lights as well. This unit also comes with a backup camera, which is pretty nice. It doesn't look like this one comes. This is a standard feature. And then of course you have your latches that unlatch it. So um, one last thing I wanna point out is it does look like you have some stabilizer jacks and these are pretty nice. This thing is a few years old, so you got to keep that in mind. It's not looking as shiny as it would be brand new, but that kind of rotates around like that. And then you just slide that right through. And then this is going to lift or stabilize the backside of it. Now, I wonder if the front has anything. No, the front does not. So the way this is going to work is you're going to have your front tongue jack and you'll have your two rear stabilizer jacks. The MDC has a front tongue jack as well. Um, they both have a wheel. So this one has these uh, hard uh, polymer plastic wheels. And then this one has an actual pretty thick rubber wheel. Um, that doesn't have air in it, it's like all rubber. I'm pretty sure this is a exclusive design or proprietary on MDC because I've never seen those on anything else because it looks all galvanized. That looks like a pretty standard jack that you can get off the shelf. Uh, now coming back over talking about stabilizer jacks, you have your front tongue jack. The MDC does have stabilizer jacks right here and you have one on each side. And then coming back, you have your two in the rear and your MDC also has two in the rear. So you do have four stabilizer jacks plus your front tongue jack. So you have five points of stability or level ability to kind of level the trailer. This one you have uh, three. You have the front and the two in the rear. So that is one thing that I noticed. But now coming back here, it does look like we have our recovery hooks. These are our D-rings, our shackles. And it doesn't look like this has any type of recovery stuff in the rear. So hopefully, hopefully you don't need that. Uh, trailers are pretty small and light. So hopefully you're never in a situation where you got to use it on either one of them. But just things that I'm pointing out and noticing. Last thing is frame. So this is a, it looks like this is a welded steel frame and that looks like about a three to four inches thick. And it is, it is not tubular. This is a C channel I can fill. I can't see what's under here. Uh, so this is a C channel. That is a tubular. The center one is a tube. This does have a skid plate that's covering everything, which is nice. I don't know if this is considered a Four Seasons. If it is, that is a big benefit of this trailer. This is definitely not a, this is, this is a sheet C channel back here. Um, let me put the steps down. I can reach in here and I can feel the C channel. I mean, I'm not a manufacturer or fabricator by any means, um, but I know for sure that tongue portion is a C channel. And I know that back is a C channel. This right here looks to be, that's a tube. That's a tubular still but you can see right here that this is C channel. MDC does this FEA, which is a finite element analysis, which is essentially they're putting this thing into a computer system and testing all of the weak points of the chassis. Um, and it's done from third party people. And as long as it's been tested, that's okay. C channels are never gonna be as strong as tubular. The center one is a tubular, which is good. The C channels on the side are not. Now this is a, this is a two by six. Is it two by six? Yeah. This is a two by six tubular steel frame. And that's gonna be, that's your main frame. And then you're gonna, it's gonna work its way down all the way back to the actual suspension. This is a rectangular hollowed tubular steel frame. And it goes all the way back to your suspension area. And then this uh, is galvanized, hot dipped galvanized. This looks like a powder coated steel. Hot dip galvanized is just where you put it into a molten bath, bath of zinc and it makes it much more corrosion resistant. Powder coated is okay, but if you scrape a powder coating, it's gonna come off and it's gonna start corroding or rusting. So definitely galvanization is more superior in everybody's opinion that works on steel. So that's not my opinion. I'm not trying to make a jab there. Now let's talk about the hitches. And as soon as we are done with the hitches, 
let's go inside the trailers and take a look at them and set them up a little bit. So um, starting over here on the Fort 9, we have a DO35. This is a Cruise Master. This is a very um, famous company out of Australia. Lots of people are using this hitch nowadays. This is a knuckle, so it goes. It pretty much goes up and down in every direction and gives you that articulating ability. Uh, these safety chains are just crazy massive, right? Um, these are rated to be able to catch the whole trailer and recover it. And they actually have a spot that they live right there. And then you have a e-brake and this is integrated into the actual brakes on the trailer. So when you get to camp, you pull that up so it doesn't roll away. Um, coming over here onto the Mission Overland, uh, you, you don't have an e-brake right off the bat. You do have your jockey wheel right here. And then the frame, this is, uh, this is your seven pin. They both do have seven pins. I didn't point that out. Um, this is your uh, safety chains. So those are gonna go out and they're gonna connect to your actual trailer. And I'm guessing you just drape them over like that. This right here is your max coupler. And this is a pretty popular hitch with uh, trailers in the US rated for 6,000 pounds. Essentially you have a, you put something in there and it's moved side to side. The nice thing is these are small trailers so they're really easy to hook up with those types of hitches. These ones are hard to hook up on a big trailer. Small trailer, they're really easy. So. Let's head on over to the back side of these trailers again, and I want to go inside of them. Uh, I did actually, uh, this does have outside speakers, so there's a stereo system, has inside and outside speakers. I didn't notice any speakers on this one on the outside. Maybe there are some on the inside, but we're gonna open this thing up and we're gonna go inside. Um, so, got these rubber straps that hold it in, and then Sorry, I have never opened up this trailer, so I'm just making sure I don't break anything. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Grab that lever, and that opens up. It's pretty cool. It's a uh, kind of has like a, a space station mission overland. It does kind of have a feel of like I'm going into outer space. So I'm gonna walk in here, and I'm gonna push this up. And then, Come on in. Yeah, so this is it. We are inside. We do have two windows. These are nice. Uh, they just, ooh, you need them because it's so hot today. It's like 100 degrees, so it's probably like 110 degrees inside this trailer. So if you see me dripping and sweat, that's why. Oh, that feels good. I gotta have a breeze. Um, you do have these screens right here, and you also have nighttime, sh nighttime shades. So you have these strings that go through these shades. These are a different type of window. I'm not as familiar with these windows, but uh, so these latches, um, see these, these, you just turn. There's actually not a locking mechanism on these, um, but these look like they are a dual pane polycarbonate windows, which are really nice. But now as I sit inside, I'm looking, I have lights. There we go. So we got some lights. Oh, that's actually, that's actually a really cool light. That's a cool little light. Uh, this, this I think is aluminum right here, this backing. And then this is like a nice little padded material. That's pretty cool. Um, this is all aluminum, aluminum. And these are all riveted. That's a nice setup. This wiring goes to, oh, that goes to the Max Vent fan. Check that out. So. This right here, I'm gonna open that up. There we go. Those are nice to have. We can install those in any trailer that we have. Those are very nice. And then, okay, so you got just a Velcro and this is a screen right here. Oh, it looks like it's a double Velcro. So you can actually have like a window and that's plastic or a PVC. So you actually have a window without the screen. So if it's cold, you can still like see outside. And I'm guessing this has a way to roll up and hold itself in place, I'm guessing, but I'm gonna close that back up. That's a cool little system. So now the light that we have in this trailer, it looks like there's some switches here. So I don't know what, oh, there it is right there. So you have some LED bars under here. 
Okay, that's good. So you do have all the way down the length of this entire trailer, you have some nice LED bars. And then what is, that's your water pump. Those might be some outside lights or something, power, maybe USB ports. Uh, coming over here, so on your bed, you have these bed lights, and then you have your LED lights right here. No lights on the roof, and it does look like you have a support pole, which is pretty cool, to make sure this stays up in case you get some weird, weird winds. You have some sort of mechanism that opens and goes like, that's going to go into there. I'm not going to do it right now because... I don't need to, I'm gonna put the thing back down. But that's a kind of a cool setup that you have that kind of latches into that place right there. This bed area is, looks to be a three inch uh, foam leather, like it's like a pleather leather pad. Uh, and it looks to be, I mean, four inches would be generous. Maybe it's four inches but it looks like three inches to me. And look at that, there's some storage. Oh, never mind. That's just uh, access panels. Oh, you can put some storage right there. This is a storage compartment. This right here is your Truma system. So not want, you wouldn't want to put anything right there, but you have your duct right there, which is nice. I do like all the aluminum. The aluminum is nice. The aluminum is good and it's bad. Um, the reason why I say it's bad is because on a hot sunny day, this right here is hot. Aluminum conducts a lot, so you get a lot of hot and cold through here. But you are you have a canvas pop top, what do you expect? <laughs> this is not made for crazy, crazy weather. Of course, with a Truma, you could be able to heat this thing up and stay in cold weather. But it appears, oh, look at that, that's kind of nice. It looks like we have some storage. So you do have some like nice little hidden cubbies throughout. You probably got another one right there, I'm assuming. I'm not going to crazy details because I'm sure there's videos out on this thing. I'm just, this is my first impressions. And then this is a lagoon table, which is very nice. Uh, but this goes down right here. This is going to drop down. And then you're going to be able to lay this down. And this will turn into what it appears to be a queen size bed. This looks like a queen size bed length. So you're going to be able to sleep two adults in this. Maybe squeeze a child with you if you want but that's all in this model so pretty cool uh this storage area let's take a look at these um well this is cool this is like a this feels like a cutting board material kind of a plastic that's kind of cool though and they got nice piano hinges so that's great and this this feels like it's all aluminum and there's a reason why this is super light because all the aluminum good amount of, good amount of storage in here and there you have it. Uh, look at this. This is kind of like a, yeah, you can see the backside of the rivets, the wiring up here, but look at this. See how they put it in a corrugated plastic and then they put rubber grommets to hold it in place. That's nice. That's a good, that's a good detail. Um, and then this is gonna be your breaker panel and this is your Truma that controls everything. So, uh, and there's your fire extinguisher and some extra little gear. That looks like that's for your uh, poles for your awning. So then you come down, this is a single step. Uh, and the way that thing works is you just slide it in there and you go off-roading. So these come down, you have a double step and let's head inside this one. So this one has these metal latches. I've already unlatched it a bit ago. And then this door actually opens this way instead of up, which I did notice, like when I first walked, when I first lift this one up, I was like, how do I get in, right? I had to go around it. Um, I'm six feet tall, so it's small, but this one's small too. They're both gonna be small to enter in, no matter what, but there's no screen on that, I just realized. There's, you have your, you have your gasket right here, and then you have these that actually hold the door open. So there's, and there's no Velcro. Maybe they have an option to some way screen this in. Uh, maybe the annex, uh, maybe there's, you can do an annex with the 270. This one you can do an annex, um, but this does have actual, an actual screen door, which is pretty nice. And this screen door, you can actually lock it in. So you can't, this is metal. 
So there's no way you're gonna have somebody break into that. It's pretty strong. This company is called Aussie Traveler. They're a really famous door company in Australia. These curtains actually have a little Velcro so you can kind of tuck them away. So when you're not using it, you can kind of have some more daytime. Anyway, so let's walk inside now and lift the roof up. Okay. So if you come in here, one of the things I do want to point out, this is actually, there's a locking bar behind here that's hidden. Um, so when it actually goes up, it locks in and it can't come down. And you can see there's a little button you push to um, get that bar to drop. So similar to the other one, you had that bar that you had to lever out and lock in. This one is automatic, but to, in order to close it, you have to push it. Now you do have the windows, but if you come in, you can uh, see that these actually are locking windows. So there's a few more latching points on them, but they are very similar window. They're also polycarbonate and they go up and give you some nice airflow, which is what I'm trying to do right now because I'm pretty sure it's 110 to 120 degrees in these trailers. And we got a nice little fan right here. So I'm gonna turn that baby on, get some air flowing on me. <laughs> uh, now, neither one of these trailers have an air conditioning system built in from the factory. So we do have a few options that we've been playing around with. So generally in a teardrop or a pop top trailer, you don't generally have air conditioning. So that's kind of to be expected. Usually you're out camping. That's why you have an outside kitchen and you have everything. These are become your, your areas to hang out and sleep, right? I'm gonna now turn on the lights in here and look at this. We have some nice little switches that turns on the lights. So now we have our lights and you can see we have some nice can lights. We also have our stereo system right here. Uh, there's also another light right there. So we don't have reading lights like in the other unit. Those reading lights were pretty cool. Um, this is gonna be your main light right over your head if you wanna use it at night. You do have a plug right here so you could plug in something potentially and put a, a, have a little maybe suction or a light onto this. This is a composite actually aluminum composite but you could probably do a suction cup onto this it's pretty nice um similar construction as far as that other one it's aluminum this one's aluminum as well so this unit is actually 91 inches long that one's 86 inches so this is a little bit wider of a trailer overall so that one might be a little bit more capable off-road you know maybe on a narrow track only by a few inches this one is definitely it's only seven foot seven inches so that is thinner than the average trailer in the u.s period so they are both going to be very capable off-road this one feels a lot wider on the inside and i'll show you on the outside why that is is because that measurement that i gave you that 86 inches that's going to be the total width and that's going to include the wheel wells and they're kind of designed a little bit different where this one you have more space in the so inside, but that's because the wheel wells are set inside and those ones, the wheel wells are set outside. A little bit different. Now, as far as inside here, you do have a nice headboard here. And this is a, one of that, you know, leather, pleather materials with some nice stitching in here. Let's see if there's any storage under here. There is a little bit of storage. You do have an access panel. It's not super deep, but you do have some storage in here. Uh, now, as far as over here, you do have a very good amount of storage. These are pretty deep as well. And you have a large drawer. Of course, you have a counter space and it comes stock with a TV, which is pretty cool. So on those rainy days, if you do wanna come inside and watch a movie, you can. And then you have your stereo system and outlet. Everything is integrated into the inverter. I didn't even see if that unit had an inverter. I'm not sure if it does. I don't think it does. It only has one battery, so I would assume it doesn't, especially being an AGM battery, you would, it would die pretty fast. Now in here, we do have a 200 amp hour lithium battery. Uh, so you're gonna be able to be off grid for quite some time. And as far as the solar goes, you have 525 watts on the roof and it is elevated panels. It is not those flat stick on panels 
which the elevated panels are always going to be more efficient. So you're going to be able to bring in a good amount of power into this unit. And then right here, you have a massive storage space here. And then everything on this is actually, uh, so that one, the solar panel system, it was uh, Renogy and it was just a solar charge controller and it probably had a separate battery charger. This is a system that's called BM Pro. So it's kind of similar to a, like a Red Arc system. It's all integrated. So you can see we're sitting here with the sun outside and we're unplugged. And so it's bringing in power from the solar. And then you have your switches right here, your water heater, your furnace, your pump, and everything is labeled, which is nice. And then you have your water gauge here. I didn't even notice the water gauge in there. I don't know if there is a water gauge. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. I didn't notice it. Another thing is this area actually does come with a lagoon, lagoon table. It's not hooked up right here. So we'll throw some videos and B-roll in there so you can see what it looks like. And you do have a furnace in here. So you do have your duct and then you have your uh, fire extinguisher as well as your Truma water heater. And then these are all your switches outside. You can see it says, it says outside lights and you have your yellow, which are these ones. And then you have your white. So you can do your white lights and your yellow. And it actually tells you left side, rear side, right side. Um, and then up here, you don't have a lot of storage because you, all your stuff is down here. But you can see this is your water system, your water pumps all built in here. Your, that's your water heater. And then over here, this is your inverter. And similar to the other guys, everything is corrugated. All the plastics corrugated plastic, and they've also put rubber grommets. But this is your BM Pro, and it's a battery management system. This system will allow it to also it, it works as a solar charge controller, so it will actually give you solar from the roof. But it also works as your shore power system, so it's automatically integrated when you plug it in. It will start charging your lithium battery and that is stock that 200 amp hour lithium battery is stock and it will also gives you a dc to dc charger on the front which i don't think i pointed that out earlier it does have an anderson plug so you can put a bunch of amperage into the back of this thing while you're driving off road that's a pretty cool system like i said it's similar to red arc patriot campers uses that lots of big brands use that uh, maybe the new mission overlands have that as an option because that is a very, very reputable brand. Okay. There you have it. The mission overland summit series. This is the MDC. This is the Fort nine, uh, both very similar in a lot of ways, similar in size, similar in weight. This is definitely a little bit heavier, uh, but all in all, they're really cool trailers. If you're looking at a teardrop or a hybrid style, you want it to pop or you want a something that you can fit in a garage or tow with a mid-sized vehicle, these might be good options for you. Now, a lot of people wanna know, well, how much is this gonna set me back? Right now, this is a brand new unit. So if you get a brand new unit, it's gonna set you back just over $45,000. But well, that's fully loaded, keep that in mind, fully loaded. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on how you option these. I don't know if it comes included with, you know, a spare tire or a propane tank. The website, we looked at it, it looks like something like this is gonna come in right around 44,000 and some change. Um, I don't know how that, how the options work though. This is completely loaded, you know, ready to roll with the exception of fridge. So it might be a little bit more for that, but all in all, awesome trailers. I uh, just wanted to do a side-by-side -side so you could educate yourself more and see more options. Um, stay tuned uh, or go check out our other video I did recently, uh, Fort 9, uh, uh, in comparison with the OGT Pando. Um, we got some other trailers here that we might go down and do some side-by-sides. So hopefully this video was valuable to you and hopefully you learned something. Obviously we sell these. Um, this is a brand that we carry. Uh, we do not sell the missions but they are a pretty cool trailer. Uh, this trailer is here available for sale if you are interested in it. It is a used trade-in model that we got. So reach out to us if you wanna, if you've been looking for one of these, we got it here right now. Um, or if you're interested in an MDC, we'd love to talk to you and help you out. So thanks for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.